An 82-year-old man duped collectors into spending $800,000 on fake PSA 10 graded Michael Jordan rookie cards and is now facing up to 20 years in prison. How the heck did this happen? And what happened? If you guys are new to the hobby, that's probably what a lot of you are thinking. How the heck did this happen? So evidently Mayo Gilbert McNeil, his name's Mayo, which to me that would have been a red flag. Uh, no offense to the guys out there named Mayo, but Mayo is accused of putting fake Jordan rookie cards inside a plastic case, essentially. A I'm not gonna call it a PSA case, because it's not, it's a plastic case, and used these fake Michael Jordan PSA 10 labels. How the heck did he do this? Well, let's look further into what he did. Well, he denies doing anything wrong in the first place, even though he used a fake identity in the transactions. An 82-year-old Colorado man ran an elaborate scheme in counterfeit sports cards, defrauding collectors to the tune of more than 800,000 over several years, according to the federal investigators. They, uh, he used Michael Jordan cards and uh, exchanged them for thousands of dollars or for valuable real cards. And we'll get into that later, what cards he chose to trade for. So this was a uh, investigation that's been happening since 2015. Uh, he was just recently arrested two days ago. He was arrested on Wednesday uh, with the wire fraud charges. He faces bringing potential prison time of up to 20 years, which is insane for, I mean, it is, it's $800,000. So I'm sure there's some kind of law that if you exceed a certain amount, you face a certain amount of time. <laughs> um, uh, so between April 2015 and July 2019, McNeil made trades online with the help of an unnamed co-conspirator at times using a fake ID and multiple email accounts to obscure his identity. To make the fakes convincing, Fed say, McNeil got a hold of plastic holders and specialist grading labels used by a prominent collector's authentication company, PSA. And I'll show you in a minute these plastic holders that anybody could easily buy. This video is to prevent this from happening again and letting you guys out there know, hey, you need to be more aware and more vigilant of before spending big bucks, big money on sports cards, okay? And I'm gonna show you just how easy it is to do and also how easy it is to prevent. It's very easy to prevent this from happening to you. So let's keep digging in. Among the cards he faked was an 86 Fleer Michael Jordan rookie card, falsely graded, 10 out of 10 for quality. Prosecutors said exchanging one for $4,500, which is a red flag. Even in 2015, a PSA 10 Michael Jordan for $4,500, the guy, the victim, must have been, he knew that was way too good of a deal. So that should have been a red flag. So he thought, in my opinion, he's thinking that this older guy doesn't know what he has. So there may have been a little bit of greed involved. I'm not saying that, you know, what Mayo did was justified in any way, uh, but I mean, for $4,500, a PSA 10 Michael Jordan 86 Fleer, they were, th 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 at the time, they were selling for over $30,000. So I feel like the guy thinks that, was thinking that he was getting a good deal and trying to take advantage. Um, the Grady Company said, adding that it is the most heavily counterfeited card in the hobby, probably because it's the most desirable card in the hobby, 86 Fleer and 86 Fleer is a very easy card to counterfeit. So not only is it one of the most desirable ones, most expensive and valuable, but it's also one of the more easier ones. Cardstock, uh, cardboard, that's literally what 86 Fleer is, it's cardboard. It's very thin cardboard. If you're not holding it in hand, if it's in a PSA case, it's even more easy to fake. Uh, if it's in a plastic case, rather, I, I shouldn't say PSA case. McNeil was not immediately reachable for comment, but he's claiming he did nothing wrong, which isn't, uh, I mean, if you look at the evidence, guys, all this information is gonna be linked below. So this is, numerous articles were written about this. Uh, I found the actual the document, the court document, and it goes through all of what happened. I'm gonna put this in the links below as well for you guys to get access to. But it covers uh, the emails that he sent to the uh, co-conspirator, uh, yeah, co which supplied him with a fake ID and I believe the, the plastic cases. Hey guys, real quick, if you're new to the channel and you wanna stay up to date with sports cards, content and values and information, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Comment below if you have any questions. And um, I appreciate y'all's support. Without any further ado, let's get back into the video. And if you look down here, uh, yep, see, in about January 2017, Mayo uh, sold two baseball cards to a sports card store in Las Vegas, Nevada. So what happened is he sold two fake cards, which were later determined to be fake, and evidently he was called out on it, or he was caught, I guess. I'm not sure if he was caught, but 
that spooked him and which made him start using a fake ID. So using fake IDs, I mean, this guy is just a scam artist, right? There's evidence of everything that he did. Another red flag for me was how he wanted to communicate off of eBay. So in 2019, victim one, he met Mayo through an online auction site. I'm guessing eBay, that's the only online auction site I know. Victim one was interested in purchasing two specific basketball cards of Jordan both of which were graded PSA 10. Although McNeil had posted that Michael Jordan card on the online, on eBay, he instructed, I'm not gonna say eBay, uh, online auction site, I'm not sure which one it is, but we're, I'm just gonna say online auction site. He instructed victim one that they should communicate directly and not use the on, online auction site. Big no-no, guys. If somebody messages you on ebay and wants to make a deal off of ebay number one that's against ebay's policy and you can get banned from using ebay suspended and whatnot what most sellers want to do is avoid the ebay fees which is whatever it is what it is but i don't think it's worth it for these big ticket items because when you, once you once that transaction leaves ebay there's no paper trail right unless you do it through paypal or venmo which if you send the money and he never sends the card, you're SOL. I mean, there's nothing that you can do about it. You can open up a PayPal case. I've always been against making deals off of eBay or out of PayPal because there are so many shady, scammy people out there who are trying to take advantage of the trustworthiness that the collectors, the hobby has, right? And if you've been in long enough in the hobby, you know that there is some big, shady scammy people out there and that's the case not just in the sports cards but most hobbies scammers are everywhere guys the sooner you realize that the better no i don't care what your hobby is if you're collecting you know garbage pal kid cards or uh, beanie babies uh, you know you're gonna find hustlers trying to take advantage of you so don't deal off of ebay in my opinion just stay on ebay that way the transaction is recorded and if the, the, buy, the seller never sends the card or that he sends the card and it's damaged or it's the wrong card, you can open a case with eBay easily and eBay will give you your money back almost 100% of the time. A lot of guys ask me if uh, eBay is reputable and trusting and I'm like, yes, dude, I've been using eBay for 15 years. I've As a buyer, I've always never had an issue. Even as a seller, I mean, as a seller, it's very difficult. Uh, for the most part, eBay is going to go in the buyer's side, even if the buyer has like a zero feedback. Uh, so if you're a buyer, eBay is definitely good. If you're a seller, it is what it is. Uh, it's difficult if, to deal with buyers, scammy buyers. eBay is a safe place. Don't transact outside of eBay because this is what happened to this guy. Uh, McNeil and the victim agreed to a sale, you know, off of eBay and victim one sent via inter interstate wire transfer $4,500 to McNeil at an Aurora, Colorado address in exchange for one Michael Jordan basketball card. McNeil shipped the Jordan card to victim one in Manhasset, New York, which is where the, uh, the this is where the case is taking place because that's where the victim is, I guess. I'm not sure how that works. I'm not a uh, lawyer by any means. So company one, PSA, I believe, later assessed the authenticity of the Michael Jordan basketball card the defendant, Mayo McNeil, sold, depicted below, and was determined that it was counterfeit. So PSA looked at this card and said, yep, that's fake. They probably looked at the label, they looked at the case, and determined it to be fake, which this even has the PSA logo down there, it looks like. Interesting. All right, let's keep moving. So on or about June 4th, 2017, victim two contacted an individual named Gilbert via email after they had previously transacted in sports cards in or around February 2017. It just goes on and on. Another guy, Gilbert, I guess, uh, traded with uh, the victim number two for some Tom Brady rookie cards. And then those were sent, those Jordan cards were sent to PSA. They were determined to be fake. Uh, it just, it, it continues until finally, I'm not sure what happened. Maybe PSA reached out to the, the feds. But the transactions between the defendant, Mayo, and victims one and two are just a representative uh, set of transactions and fraudulent sports cards engaged in by the defendant and his co-conspirators. So evidently he's done, Mayo has did a lot more. Uh, this, these two are just uh, a few examples. The investigation has revealed that as a result of the defendant's scheme, he and his co-conspirators obtained approximately 808,500 
$100 in cash or authentic sports cards from their victims. And it, go, it goes on to, uh, you know, some more lingo, lawyer lingo. So let's look and see what exactly Mayo did. Evidently, he acquired a case, which it's hard to see, but it looks like there's some markings down here, which is not hard to do, guys. And I'll show you exactly probably what he did. He went to Alibaba.com, where they sell numerous cases like this. They're blanks. You can have these companies... Uh, label these cases just like PSA does for an additional fee and these are going to be the exact same dimensions as PSA probably not the, the exact same quality but very similar that a, uh, a, a new collector would, would not be able to tell the difference um, probably even some veteran collectors that you know these the technology is getting better and better so you can see they come opened already all you have to do is put the card in put the label in close it push on it it's sealed and it looks authentic but how do you duplicate the michael jordan basketball card very easy guys we're with modern technology anybody can do it you go to a printing website that prints business cards any kind of you know print material and you type in you search you ty i typed in trading cards and this popped up so this is silk trading card you know you, you're going to want to do the matte finish uh two and a half by three and a half so you can choose the different paper type but you want to get as close to possible as that cardboard um even if if you don't you, collectors just uh, new new collectors they don't know that what to look for for in a in a in a counterfeit card i mean it's very easy to fake these cards guys and look we're 86 dollars for 250 and you take a high resolution scan of the card which you can get online anywhere front and back submit it to a, a, a pretty company and you can get 250 of these cards and sell them now listen i'm not trying to promote this i'm not trying to show you guys what to do on how to and how to fake cards I'm just telling you how easy it is and that you need to be vigilant, okay? Before spending any money on PSA cards, go to their website, psacard.com, right? Simple. Scroll to the bottom. Go to the certification verification link. This is why PSA has these labels. They're three steps ahead of the counterfeiters. I would say more than that. The victims are the people that don't do their due diligence and the research. Don't be that guy, guys. Don't be that guy. Stay aware of what's going on in the hobby and do your due diligence, right? What happened here was he took a label from an already graded PSA 10 card with a certification number that was valid. It was real. And PSA puts it on the front and the back. So 20582993. If you go to the website and you type in the certification, which I already did, and you verify, Previously, this one uh, popped up. What would have popped up was that it was authentic. And Mayo knew that. So he took a card that was already graded, serial number, and used that label. So if you were to search it, right, it would pop up as authentic. And that's great for him, but terrible for new guys, right? So what did PSA do to prevent that? Well, if you go to the website, and you can find this right here. See, this is all the information. They have a Lighthouse logo, Fugitive Inc., cert number. This is the Lighthouse label. There's a whole spiel down here. If you want to go to, here's a video right here, and I already have it pulled up. The, uh, Joe Orlando, the previous president, went, goes through all you need to know about this. See, if it looks like that, that's a no-no. If it, the, the lighthouse label doesn't have a lighthouse effect where once, as you tilt it, so this case, uh, I dropped it and it broke, so I'm gonna, um, I'm not sure what to do with it. You can see authentic, so also there's a mirror effect. If, if the car doesn't have a mirror right there when you, when you shine it or tilt it, then it's, it's, it's a fake label. It's a printed label from a, a printing website. The same thing that they did with the cards, well, they took a high resolution scan of this label, right? And they submitted it to a printing company and printed it off and then cut it out uh, with a, probably a paper cutter. So what they did was took a high res scan and those high resolution scans are not gonna have that mirror effect, right? That's not gonna have that. Or the lighthouse label. So when you hold these cards in hand and it doesn't have that uh, that effect that this video was showing you, 
then they're fake. It's simple as that. So not only do you need to look out for fake cards, you need to look out for fake labels. Even though the, the label in the cert, cert certification check, even though it passes. So if you type in, let's see, I'm gonna type in this, this label right here. So 612. So this is what happens when you type in a, a label that's authentic. PSA gives you all the information. And that's that's what you should and that's probably what happened to the guy who bought this card. Because the real card that had the real label was authentic. However, the card that he got, this card was a re, was he printed it just like he printed off the Jordan card. Which who knows, could have been the exact same card as the that was in this label. So in order to prevent that, guys, you just you need to know what to look for. Uh, don't be spending big money on cards when you're you're not uh, familiar and experienced with how to tell the difference between a real label, fake label, real card, and a fake card. And don't try to take advantage of. Uh, don't try to. Don't be greedy. If someone's trying to sell you a, a thirty thousand dollar card for five thousand dollars, I I feel like that's a that's a red flag, right? If they're trying to make deals off of eBay or off of the platform, that's shady. You don't want to do that. That If it's too good to be true, guys, remember that if it's too good to be true, it probably is, okay? If you guys have any questions, just comment below. I'll answer it as quick as I can. Uh, you know, it's, sometimes it takes me a minute to answer comments, but I, I tried my best to do so. Uh, the best way to communicate with me is on YouTube because I get notifications and I try to answer as quick as possible. I don't double answer, so I'm not going to have a whole conversation with you on YouTube. So make sure to uh, get all your questions in that one comment, okay? And then I'll respond uh, as best as I can. I appreciate you all watching. Thanks for the support. Uh, stay posted for more videos. Without any further ado, that's in the video. <laughs> that's in <end> the video. <laughs> See you guys.